Welcome to Milton and King's On the Wall podcast, where we engage in interesting conversations with artists, designers, and more. Today we speak with Catherine Marion, a commercial wallpaper artist from Canada living in New Zealand. We hope you enjoy this conversation. If you do, please subscribe and consider leaving us a rating and review. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Good, and you? Good. Thank you for joining me today. Yeah, all good. All good. You're calling. You're 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 um, joining me from New Zealand right now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So are um, you in the U.S.? Yeah, so I'm I'm in the Los Angeles area. I don't know if you're familiar with like Orange County, but it's Southern California area. Yeah, I've been before. Oh, okay. When when were you here last? Uh, ages ago. It was like when I was a teenager with my dad. I'm actually from Canada. Okay. Yeah, and we just went for a trip, and it's a very nice place. <laughs> What did, what did you uh, do on your trip? Did you do like Disneyland and things like that? No. Uh, what did we do? So we went to um, we went to Los Angeles. We went to San Francisco. It was actually very chilly in San Francisco, even though it was summertime. Oh, uh, yeah. It was surprising. Yeah. Yeah. It did, um, San Francisco can be when the sun is hitting you, it feels nice. And then the, the moment the sun goes behind the clouds, it's freezing. Yeah. It was very cold. Yeah. Um, and then we went to San Diego as well. We went to the zoo, which I remember was very cool. Okay. Uh, and we went to a, a place with very big trees. I don't remember where that is. Do you the know? Sequoias, Sequoia National yeah. Park. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The redwood yeah. trees. Yeah. yeah. It was a nice trip. Yeah. So you, um, so just to give anybody that's listening a bit of background. So as you mentioned, you're originally from Canada. Mm-hmm. And uh, before I get this wrong and I butcher your name, so how do you pronounce your last name? Is it Mar- Marion? Yeah, Marion, but like I'm from the French part of Canada, so I would say Catherine Marion. Marion. But, yeah, but if I speak in English, I'll say Catherine Marion. So, oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So you were from the French part of Canada, like from Montreal, from... Yeah, that's it. Oh, you're from Montreal. But I'm from the South Shore, so like... I mean, I just take the bridge, and I'm in Montreal, but it's like the Montreal region. Uh huh. Yeah. It's, so you that's were b- born and raised there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, and that's that's entirely is it entirely French speaking? Uh, yeah, basically, like all my family is French, um, and even like my English was not very good until I was in my twenties, and I went to travel New Zealand. Uh, when I was maybe, I think, 23, 24. And my English was pretty poor. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I met uh, my partner, which is a uh, East Scottish. He was traveling as well. And then um, I went to live in Scotland for a few years with him. And then we decided to move back to New Zealand. So, so yeah, from French to now, like, fully English all the time. And I'm losing my French a bit when I speak to my family. It's pretty Oh, tricky. really? Yeah, I was yeah, always yeah. wondering that because I took Italian in in college and mm-hmm. for about two or three years and I was doing pretty well but now you know that was years ago and I pretty much lost all of it but when it's your native language that you grew up with I always wondered do you do you lose it in the same way or is it just always there when you want to go back to it It's always there but it's just like words or like way of saying phrases and you're like uh, how do I say this again? Uh, every time I speak to my parents, I just say stuff in English, and they're like, "Oh, Catherine, <laughs> you're losing your French." <laughs> now, how how different is speaking French in Canada as opposed to speaking French in France? Is there much difference, or is it exactly the same? Yeah, it's quite, but the accent is very different. Um, like I don't know, we so in in French Canada, we call ourselves Quebecois. Um, and when we go to France, we understand them very well, but they cannot understand us too well, oh, which wow. is very annoying. It's like it's like they're doing it on purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, like if you take the plane back from France to Canada, um, like and the fra- the plane would be full of French people, and like you know, I was there one time, and the the pilot started speaking, and he was uh, Quebecois, and I could hear everybody on the plane being like, what is he saying? <laughs> what is he saying? Is he even speaking French? So, yeah. So it's, it's very different, but... 
That's interesting. Yeah. So that, that that was a good test because then nobody was really putting it on. They probably were just genuinely wondering why the language yeah, sounds they, they just not, slightly different. Yeah, they were not even speaking with the person. They just couldn't really understand what he was saying. Um, but yeah, there's also a lot of words that are kind of different. Like I, when I was at uni, I I went to France for like a semester uh, to school there, mm-hmm. and. And yeah, I was using a bunch of like turn of phrases or uh, words that they didn't use. And also, yeah, they were taking the piss a bit, but <laughs> it's all good Just in, a <laughs> fr- in a friendly way. So um, before I get too ahead of myself, um, let me just go back to um, growing up in Canada. So um, how mm-hmm. long, how long did you, were you, you were born there, right? Yeah. And then how long, so how long did you live before you had moved or traveled for school or anything, how long were you living there in Canada? Uh, so probably 20 years, 20, 21, 22 years. Okay. Yeah, I went I went to school uh, in France when I was, I think, 22. And okay. then went, went traveling New Zealand when I was 23. Yeah, so basically, that's it, yeah. Okay. And so what was, uh, what was it like growing up in... Uh, in the Montreal area in Canada, and did you um, did you go to did you get have any specific sort of um, art training or art school or anything there while you were growing up? Yeah, so um, so in Canada we have um, this school. It's called Cégep, which is uh, just after high school, and it's for two years. Um, so I did art like traditional art when I when I went there and it was really fun like painting and drawing and sculpting and all that stuff now that's c-e-g-e-p um, right yeah that's it yeah mm-hmm. um and then I went to university in industrial design which I didn't really like why is and that and then I so what what is that or no why why did you not like industrial design Oh, it was too, like, mathematical, like, you know, I really liked the visual aspect of it, like building a bench or building a product, but there was too many constraints for me, like it had Mm -hmm. to work, which, like, I didn't like. So the utility of it turned you off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I did that for a week, uh, sorry, a week, a year and a half, and then I switched to graphic design, and then I finished that course. It was uh, at uni for three years yeah and so did yeah. you um did you were you always creative were you always artsy and you always had a, a knack and a talent for drawing as a kid oh yeah definitely yeah yeah and like i went into graphic design because i thought that this was the way like to have a career and still include art and everything mm-hmm. um like in my life but basically i would just have to stick with art the whole way if I knew that it was possible from the start. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so no, I've been drawing since I was a kid. I used to. Um, so I was really into Pokemon when I was like maybe, I don't know, I don't know when it came out, maybe 10, 10 years old. And I would Pokemon. just like, yeah, Pokemon. Yeah. Oh, wow, funny. <laughs> and I would just like draw them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, did anybody I, yeah. teach you how to do that or did you just pick it up on your own? No, I just picked it up on my own. It was just what I like to do. Yeah. Okay. So did you have a, is your family artistic at all? Um, my mom, she's an interior designer. Um, okay. Yeah. And she, she dressed quite well, I think, but no, not especially. Nobody really kind of pushed me. So did you come from a, a big family? Do you have any, how many siblings do you have? Uh, I've got one sister. So, and Is she still in Canada? Yeah, she's still in Canada. She lived in, in Japan for a few years. And uh, so she met her husband there. And when we moved to New Zealand, they were like, oh, it's cool, you're not too far. So they came to visit us. But now they're back in Canada. So, Okay. Younger sister or older sister? Uh, she's younger. She's, she's turning 30 this year. When did you discover that you had a knack for it? Or did you just, did you, did your parents tell you like, oh, you're doing such a good job? Or were you just sort of impressed with yourself like how did you know oh this is something that I can do that not everybody else can do and maybe I should do something more with this uh, I mean 
I've always been like, so, you know, you're in primary, primary school and I've always been like the kid that draw and like people would say that I was good, like from the start, but it's just because I drew a lot. It's not, yeah, I think anybody could have been really good. It's just because that's what I like to do. I, I think you would speak to most artists and they would say the same. They would just say like, yeah, I just drew and that's what happened. So then um, you finished with, is you called it CJEP? Is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. In Canada? Um, and then you decided at that point you were going to go into graphic design. When did you actually make the, or, or why was it that you decided, oh, I need to go to France to do a semester or whatever over there? Was that part of the art program that you were having, that you had in Canada? Or was it just something in addition? Or how, what was that? So basically... I think if you had enough, uh, if you had good grades, you could go. It was like an exchange. Uh, and I, mm -hmm. I love to travel. So I, I really tried to like get in the program and, and go. And it just happened that we only had one choice and it was friends. So, <laughs> so I went there. Okay. And how long did you actually spend there? Um, I don't know. So it was one semester. So that's what, maybe three, four months. But then I stayed a bit longer. Do you, remember, long. what, do you remember what the course was? Like, or what, what classes you took there? Did you feel like being in France helped you? Oh, yeah, but it was it, it was exactly like what I was doing in Canada. So it was graphic design. So I was just in their school, in the French school. So it was all mm -hmm. the classes that everybody else was taking. Um, but it was really cool to see different, um, a different way of learning graphic design. Um, because it's it's quite different in France, and yeah. How so? What was what was different about the way that they were instructing? I don't know. I felt it was, it was more loose, um, and yeah, they were pushing on like different aspects. I think they were pushing a bit more on ad advertising and less on technical, um, technical stuff. But yeah, hmm. yeah. But it was very it was very fun. It was a great experience to just like. It was the first time I lived in another country than mm -hmm. Canada for, like, by myself as well. So that was very cool. You were mentioned that you were in Scotland for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, was that part of the same trip, or was that a separate travel trip? Or what? What brought you to Scotland? Yeah. So when I was in New Zealand, so that was after France. So I did. I finished uni, so I came back from France as well, which was part of uni. Um, and then I was like, oh, I don't really want to find a job straight away. So I decided to travel. Um, okay. And then I went to New Zealand on my own. And uh, I met my partner whilst traveling. He was traveling as well in New Zealand. And <clears throat> he was, he's Scottish. So he was like, oh, uh. it would be nice to like, maybe try to see how this go. So, um, so we went to Scotland together for a few years just to just because that's where he's from yeah yeah okay and so why ultimately did you and your partner both settle back on New Zealand uh because <laughs> yeah I don't know Scot Scotland is not for me it's too it's too rainy it's to okay. focus on um on your job yeah it's really like job orientated um yeah okay and, I struggle with the summer as well. It's not very warm. Well, it sounds like the culture was a bit of, um, didn't sort of sit well with you. I mean, I, I can understand um, growing up in the U.S. and even going to Australia, which you wouldn't think is too different, but there is a different attitude and culture towards work. Oh, yeah. So sometimes they, you know, it's that whole work to live or live to work. Mm -hmm. Motto yeah. that people have. And so you felt that when you were in New Zealand, it was more of a, a laid back, uh, more of a, you know, we, we got to do our jobs, but there's things outside of your work that defines you. No, definitely. Yeah. You go to New Zealand and like, when you meet somebody new, they don't ask you straight away, like, what's your career? <laughs> they just yeah. ask you like what you like. And yeah, it's just much nicer because I felt that like Canada and Scotland as well, it was a bit like of a competition, like, oh, who's got the best? career who's doing the best yeah all the time it's very it's kind of annoying a bit oh, I see. 
Yeah. And so um, how did you find adjusting to New Zealand? I mean, I know, you know, it's not easy to move to the other side of the world away from your family. You know, you're a day ahead, sort of. You're even, you know, time zones and stuff and, and, and calling family. Sometimes it's, it doesn't line up very well. Oh, yeah. um, how did you find that find find adjusting to the how, well? How long have you been in New Zealand now? Uh five years. It's been easier. five years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how how did you find adjusting, or do you still find yourself adjusting? Oh no, it, it's my home now. I love it here. Yeah, it's so good. We we live um so we live in Taranaki, uh, which has like do you know Taranaki? No, I mean I've I've only heard of it because I've I I you know in in preparing for this um podcast i read a little bit from our blog that we have and how you, you basically said you live at the base of a volcano <laughs> yeah that's it so like it's kind of a it's a beautiful place so there's the volcano which is like it's it's mount taranaki and in winter it gets all um all white like at the top so at the moment there's some snow at the top and it's, it's beautiful and we're just next to the sea so my partner uh, he loves to surf so he goes like surfing so he's in the wave in the sea and you can see the big volcano like in the background so it's just like it's just amazing yeah yeah i, I, I really love it here yeah i read that you um you know it's you, you sort of are at a farmhouse and you grow vegetables and you have chickens and and all that type of stuff is that still yeah no that that's still not laid land it's not the case anymore <laughs> so we were so that was like when we arrived um so we were renting a place it was very nice. So we had like a house to ourselves with a nice backyard and we had chickens and the farmer had sheep and cows and all that stuff. And we had, I mm-hmm. had my like veggie patch as well, which was very, very nice. Um, but then we really wanted to build a camper van and to go travel in it. So okay. we did that. So we bought just a, a long base um, for transit and there was nothing in it and we just, turned it into a camper van and then we've been living in it for the past two years are you still living in it now yeah yeah that's why that's why i went for a run this morning and i took we've got a little car a little gemini to like for runabout and yep. and i just took it and went for a run and then now, now i'm in the car park because where we are parked at the moment with the van the connection was not too good so you're literally just um traveling i mean do you are you sort of sort of settling is it you said taranaki there or are you tr- constantly moving and traveling around to different places so for the past for the past year we've been traveling around um and we just came back to taranaki uh, now because we went <clears throat> sorry we went to canada and scotland to see our family like a month ago mm-hmm. um and then previous to that we were traveling and we'd been traveling for like almost a year and we were like, oh, it would be nice to just get back into a job. So we came back to Taranaki and my partner's working at the moment. And um, yeah. I assume you're still um, creating art and drawing and, and all that. Are you finding it difficult to do in, in that environment where you're kind of just moving around and you don't have like a room to go to? Or It's tricky when I'm drawing on paper because I, I like to start... Um, my patterns on paper. I really like to draw kind of big and to be able to continue the lines. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, it's quite tricky in the van because you cannot really do that too much. So I'm like in the, on the countertop in the kitchen area. So yeah, it's a bit cramped. But if I'm on my iPad, that doesn't really matter too much. I suppose every artist is different. Um, and I noticed, you know, a lot of people are drawing and, and on, drawing on paper or different types of... Um, canvases but mm-hmm. i noticed in a lot of your photos and stuff you're doing a lot of it i guess it's on an ipad or some sort of tablet um yeah. so are you you're saying that you oh you always start with the actual physical drawing first and then what do you do you just copy it over to the ipad or how does how does your process work uh, yeah so that's it. So I, I start on on paper and um i take a picture normally of what i'm working on um so, and I don't always do the whole pattern on paper. I'll draw like one section, take a picture, draw it on the iPad, and then I will um, draw more bits on paper and then just kind of 
add to the whole artwork bit by bit. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, so um, was the whole drawing on the iPad, was that something that you learned at university with the graphic design education? No. Um, so at university, I, I learned a lot about like Photoshop and Illustrator, but there was no iPad drawing mm-hmm. too much back then. Um, yeah, so I think maybe two or three years ago, I finally got an iPad that I was really wanting to. Like I, I, I would see people draw on, on an iPad on, on Instagram and everything, and I was like, oh, that would be so good. <laughs> yeah, so so I got one. And so yeah. I'm using it. So, what, do you ever now. start with the iPad, or you still always start drawing, or have you ever created a piece just starting on the iPad? Yeah, I don't know. I imagine some people must start on the iPad, but I find it really hard because I've always started on paper. So, I I think it depends. I think if you if you if you're like an artist and you start to learn and to develop your skill on on the iPad straight away it's easier for you, but I find it so hard. I really, I really like to start on paper first. What is the first thing that you did where you said, okay, um, I can make money from this or I I can make a, I don't know about making a living, but I can maybe even have a side job. Like what was the first thing that you did that you either sold or, or what was the first step that you took that, that made your art become maybe the seeds of what would become your business? Yeah. Um, so basically, I used to be a graphic designer when I was in Scotland. <clears throat> um, I, so I worked in a studio and I, I didn't like it. It was mm-hmm. not my cup of tea. <laughs> was it just the structure of the job um, or what What didn't you like? Uh, yeah. I mean, like now I can just draw what I want. And like th- there's a lot of people that get in touch and they are like asking me, oh, can you draw this for me? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I just want to draw what I want to draw. And if you like it, you can you can buy it. Um, but being a graphic designer, you're like always under, like you've got a thousand buffs. Like everybody is your boss. Every client tells you how to do stuff. And uh, I, I just, it, it wasn't for me. So I don't think I could have done that much longer so I kind of had no choice to turn to art and really mm-hmm. try to make it work. Um, and when we moved to New Zealand, um, my partner was like, like he, he knew I was not really happy doing graphic design. So he was like, oh, Catherine, you should really, like he, he believed he believed in me, what, which was really cool. Like he was like, Catherine, I think you, you can do this. And um, like my job can, can bring enough money for the both of us for now. So, just try to build your art career and we'll see how that goes. And so that was so nice of him. So I, I started doing that and yeah, it's really scary at the start. You like everybody tells you that art is such a hard way to make a living. Like, like the, the penniless artist, um, but it's not the case. Like, if you stick at it, I think you just need to be consistent and, like, opportunities comes true. And if, if you continue doing it, it just works. And anyway, it worked for me and I didn't think it would. So <laughs> I'm pretty That's happy. That's so important, I think. Um, maybe you underrated or underappreciated is uh, when you have a partner, having that partner who really understands you and knows your passions and really encourages you to... Go for what go for what you want, or go for your dreams, or, or don't give up. That kind of thing. It sounds like you've got that in your partner. Yeah, definitely. And like back then, back when he was telling me that I should go for it, like m- my style, I didn't have a style. First of all, it wasn't. I didn't. So I had to find that for myself. Kind of my style that you now can see on my Instagram on on the wallpapers that we do together. So I didn't have that. So. It's nice that he could, even before that, see that I would get somewhere. Yeah, so it's nice to have somebody that kind of has your back. How did the meeting between you and, and Milton and King happen? How did you, were you already 
doing designs for wallpaper or did you have designs and then you were approached by Milton and King? How did that all come about? I, I got in touch with Bryce um, through email because I found your website and I was like, oh, that's really cool. But I was not doing any kind of patterns at the time. I just had like plain art- artwork. Um, so I just sent you guys my portfolio and Bryce was like, yeah, that could work. It's, it could be quite nice as wallpaper. So he said, can you make this as pattern? And I was like, oh, fine. I've got no idea how to make a pattern, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically what happened. I figured it out. And yeah. So, so you, had, you hadn't done anything in, in the world of wallpaper prior to that? No. And so, so he's saying, you know, can you make this into a pattern? So does that mean like when you are doing your art, are you basically making it so that it's a repeatable pattern? Did you create that? Yeah, now I am. Uh, But at at first, no, I wasn't. Was it, uh, was Bryce helping you do that? No, (laughs) no, he kind of said, uh, I would be nice, like to make it as a seamless pattern. And I was like, perfect. I've got it. I'll figure it out. <laughs> how did you figure that out? Like, how did you go, okay, I need to make this somehow repeatable both vertically and horizontally and work within? Like, how did you, how did, how did you figure it out? Yeah, I just followed some YouTube tutorial. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I just went online and tried to figure it out. It was, at the start, it wasn't too hard because, you know, I don't know if you've seen my first wallpaper were. So the kingfisher, the hummingbird, mm-hmm. and the fantail. So all the elements are kind of like not touching each other and not overlapping. Yeah. So that was much easier to repeat. Um, and now since then, I've kind of uh, progressed. Uh, and now there's like a lot of elements that intertwine. Um, so that's a bit trickier, but I've got I've got a hand on it now. Yeah. So do you feel like? Even now, you're sort of still learning as an artist, at least at least in the medium maybe of wallpaper or, or maybe just drawing in general. Do you feel like you're always sort of perfecting your craft, learning how to do things better? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's fun to like... Um, so basically, at some point, I got a bit tired of my own style. I was like, I felt a bit like I was in a rut. Um, hmm. But... And then I tried to do like other stuff, but it was always a bit like, uh, no, I was always coming back to my original style. And now what I'm doing is just pushing that style in different direction and try to improve it, which is much more fun because I already have like a good base of like how I do my artwork. So it's just nice to try to make it a, a bit more every time, like to push it a bit further. Mm hmm. I suppose I've I've heard that from artists. It's pushing yourself past your comfort zone is a really important part of mm-hmm. continuing your artistic journey. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and and like it could have gone into a completely different direction, but I think it's best to kind of stick to kind of what you know, but just push it a bit further. Yeah. So when I'm looking at your original designs, uh, you have exotic kingfishers. Uh, the Japanese cranes, mm-hmm. hummingbirds, fantails. Um, were these all designs that you kind of had sitting around for a while? Because you said you would sort of put that as as in your style, but you said you didn't always have that style. You didn't really know what it was. Not too long ago, only a few years ago. Yeah. Um, so were these were elements of these designs kind of something you already had and you were already playing around with? Or did you say, okay, I'm going to create my style and these are going to be the first things that I create? Yeah, no, these were the first th- first thing I created. Like, I tried different styles. So at some point, I had a phase where I, I had, like, kind of really abstract flowers. and um, But that didn't really stick. Um, yeah, no, I just, I just went straight for it. <laughs> Do you have a favorite out of those original designs? I think there's, like, five or six of them. Did you have a favorite out of those that you thought um, that you were most proud of? Um, I mean, the Kingfisher was my first one, I think, that I did in this style. Yeah, I think that's probably my favorite just because of that. And this one I actually drew um, by hand and I hand painted it. 
on paper. Okay. Yeah, because I thought that was a, what I was going to do. Uh, at the start, I thought I was going to be like a painter. <laughs> um, and then it turned out that just drawing it on the computer and on the iPad was much better and easier for me because I had that background in graphic design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You might be repeating yourself. I'm not sure, but how did you, how do you get from the draw, the hand painted drawing to the one in the iPad? Are you scanning anything? Are you just kind of copying it side by side or how do you oh, get I take it from... a picture. I, I okay. take a picture and then I just draw over the top of it. Oh, okay. And do, how do yeah. you take that picture just with your iPad? Yeah. I mean, you could okay. scan it. It would be the same result, but I don't have a scanner. Okay. Yeah. So you take a picture with your iPad of the drawing and then you start adding digitally over the top of that. Yeah, that's it. I just redraw. So I've got like the Apple Pencil, which allows you to draw on the iPad. So I just redraw the lines like over the top of my sketch. And then so after those initial designs, I think you had three more that have come out now. You've had the Turtle Doves. I don't mm -hmm. think that was part of the original batch. No. Um, the figs and strawberries. Mm -hmm. And then you had one that just launched. Is it, I don't know how to pronounce that. Is it Huia? Oh, yeah. That's it. It's a, a New Zealand bird um, and it's extinct. Yeah. It's, it's, it's extinct. Yeah, it is. So how did you decide to do that or where did you find the inspiration to do that? Did you see it in, in I mean, a museum it, or? Yeah, it's at the museum. It's like a very well-known bird because it's like so kind of aesthetic. It's very good looking. And mm -hmm. um, I've always wanted to draw this one, and, but there's not too many pictures of it. So it's, it's quite hard to find a good reference. But I found one online and I was like, oh, perfect. I'll, <laughs> I'll do it. It's, it's time. I'll do it now. Um, but I was going to say, you know, you can see the difference between the first lot of artwork and the one I'm doing now, there are much more kind of connected. All the elements like overlap and mm -hmm. intertwines. So, yeah, so there's definitely a progression uh, with my work, which I'm really happy to see every year. When you did the exotic Kingfishers one as your first one, mm -hmm. what, did you have sort of like a, a moment where you're like, oh my gosh, this is the style, this is it? Yeah. How did you know when you were? How did you know when you were done that this was gonna? Because you said it's the first one out of that whole group, and you yeah. were kind of searching for your style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I drew it, and I was like, "That looks good," but I was not set on that style yet. I did a few more in that style, and I had like a little collection, and I was like, "Okay, yeah, this is working. Let let's stick to that. That's a good idea." Mm. <laughs> So when you're doing these, how much um, do you do much research or anything like that? Or are you literally just kind of sitting out in nature and you see something and you take a picture, or or or, or do you, are you diving into Google and doing research on the birds or the florals or how, what's your process for creating? Yeah, but it's a bit of both. So I'll be because we've traveled quite a lot the past year. Uh, and there's different different flora around um, New Zealand, uh, and there's different birds as well. So, like you go to a different region, and you'll have birds that you don't have, like in Taranaki. Um, so that was really cool. I would just like take notes or take pictures of flowers or birds that I wanted to include into new artwork. Um, so that's more like kind of how to how I decide which bird or which flowers I'll, I'm going to put in um, but like basically when I was traveling um, in Scotland and in Canada we would go to museum and like old castle and all that stuff and I would just take pictures of things I really liked so mm -hmm. you know you go to an old castle in, in Scotland and there'll be tapestry or I don't know there's just beautiful ornaments everywhere even we went for a, a little um weekend in New York when we were in in Montreal with my family because it's so close uh, and just walking down the street like I saw like something engraved in the wall like it was so pretty it was like uh, water lilies like all intertwined and I just took a picture <laughs> because I'm like 
that's that's just perfect. That's just such nice inspiration. Mm. Um, and I think our room as well, our hotel room over there was in an art deco style. And so there was like really nice wallpaper and like the architecture as well was gorgeous. So I was just like taking pictures, like really thinking of what am I going to do next, like as an artwork. So yeah, inspiration comes from pretty much everywhere. And then, and then I would go on Google to like, once I've decided which flowers and birds I'm going to work with, I'm, I'm trying to find like a lot of images that shows that that flower or that plant or whatever, like really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really great that you, um, as an artist, you know, that that's funny because a lot of times I'm sure, uh, thousands, millions of people may go down the street and not recognize those things or stay in those hotels and not even pay attention. But you are seeing and appreciating the bits of artwork that are sort of all around all the time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I think that's that's for anybody, like, because your work takes so much time in your life that you really think about it, even if you're not at work. Mm -hmm. So when I was a graphic designer, I would go to restaurants and like really look at the menu and like how it was set up and or logos that you see a bit everywhere. So it, it really just depends. It's just like where your head's at. But now yeah. I'm really looking at if I'm taking a walk in the park, I'm just looking at the flowers. I'm like, whoa, that's gorgeous. I'm taking a picture. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Um so do you, I mean, would you imagine yourself, because right now I, I've noticed, you know, most of the stuff is, is um, florals and birds and things like that. But you, mm -hmm. you, you seem to find inspiration from other things, like whether it be the volcano or anything like that. Do you, find, do you think that doing uh, landscapes and things like that are in the plans for you at some point? Or do you think you're going to just stick with what you know? Or can you see yourself expanding to these other sort of nature forms? Yeah, I don't know. Huh? I mean, never say never, but not at the moment because I've got so much ideas, so many ideas for new artworks that don't really include any landscape. But if I get too bored one day, I'll just maybe try to rock the boat a bit and do something different. Mm. It could be even portraits or like, because you, you could include all that kind of floral elements to a portrait in the background and I don't know yeah that'd yeah, be a way to do it yeah so do you feel like you've got I mean imagine it sounds like you're everywhere you go you've got your camera ready to go oh I uh, just take pictures on my phone oh do you yeah okay so but it sounds like you've got a a good library or a good list of um of things in 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 waiting uh, mm -hmm. that, yeah. you, that you have ready to uh get started on yeah, and it's always just knowing what to put together because so there's different birds I want to draw or different flowers I want to draw, but I need to find which one will go together, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm currently working on a new piece um, with some bell birds, which is a New Zealand bird. Mm -hmm. um, and we saw some uh, down south in the South Island when we were traveling. Um, and I was like, oh, these are very cool. I'm going to do those. So now it's the time. Um, and then I, I've been wanting to draw um, iris, iris flowers for mm -hmm. a long time. So, And I thought they would look quite cool because sometimes they're, they're kind of purplish. And there's a bit of purple on the bird as well. And I was like, oh, that could work. That could work. Now, do you see yourself when you're, um, when you're let's say, going to, draw a new piece are you sort of doing it always with wallpaper in mind now or are you doing it with um idea of just selling the prints or what, what what's sort of your when you're doing these drawings like where do you see them being or do you are you always looking at them at them as being wallpapers or something else yeah but i do always keep the wallpaper in mind because i don't know i think they work quite well in wallpaper and i, I really like to work with you guys so i always try to create something new with that in my mind and I'll, I know that patterns can um, are transferable to a lot of different products as well so like fabric or 
I don't know, even just gift wrapping paper or mm -hmm. packaging. So it's really nice that the design can be expanded like bigger than just one single artwork. So I do it now straight away as a pattern, but I also sell prints on in on my Etsy shop and um, it's just like section of the patterns. So it doesn't really matter. They can also be used only as an artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It must be gratifying though when uh you know when you see the Instagram or something and you see somebody's got your art in their bedroom or bathroom. It must be um really surreal to see in and, and and not, you know, what's what was on your iPad is all of a sudden, you know, yeah. in somebody's bedroom in Wyoming or something. You know, it's uh, uh, definitely that's like that's like the best part. That's like the best part of the job. It's amazing. Yeah. I love it so much. And like people do they do such different things with it as well. Like ah, it's amazing. I love it. I love it so much. Yeah, and it's it's in a weird way uh, like music or something it sort of connects you to so many people that you don't even know. Yeah, and it like the design will mean something different to everybody, which is so nice. It's so nice that somebody's putting that into their house and they'll be part of their home and like their life now and like they'll have memories with that design it's just great yeah so what's um what's next on the horizon for you well before i actually actually asked that i i did notice that um you've you've done a name change yeah but i've been called folklore and flora for ages but people would would keep like uh mistake mis uh saying mistake. it wrong yeah yeah they would say uh, folklore and fauna sometimes so it was a bit tricky to, to yeah and I, at some point I changed it to folklore and flora by Catherine Marion because I kind of wanted to have my name somewhere in there mm -hmm. and but it was quite long so I just changed it to Catherine Marion now and there, there was all but all, all, already somebody called Catherine Marion like on social and everything so I added art at the end mm -hmm. so it's so was it strictly just sort of a, a business thing, branding, so that you could, so people could find you easier? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Gotcha. Okay. Um, just to get an idea of, of what's next for you, I know you said you had a bunch of different um, designs you wanted to get to, but just sort of what's on the horizon for you in the in the next maybe few months to a year? What what are, what are your plans? Um. What are my plans? But I'm going to finish the design that I'm working on. So I'm, I've just started drawing some um, lilies of the valley uh, to add to it. Mm -hmm. So I I asked a question on on my social just to... Because I, I, I left... I started this artwork before going on holiday, like three months ago. And now I was just getting back into it and I was a bit kind of out of the flu <laughs> I didn't really know where to go next so I asked what people thought and like lilies of the valley was so popular in the comments so I just started drawing this one to add to the artwork so I'm going to be working on this pattern for the next maybe few weeks and then after that I don't know I'll see I'll see what I, I don't have any plans really how long does it usually take for you to go from like from beginning to end, when you're starting a design to when it's finished, how, how long does that usually take? It takes ages. <laughs> so it takes maybe, because I always have like other works coming in whilst I do a pattern. Um, so I cannot work always like fully on one design. Um, but it would take me from the sketch to the final piece, like digital with colors and everything. Maybe three to four weeks, so okay. a lot of time. Yeah, that's not as long as I thought you would say when you said oh, a long time. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> it's just sometimes I think that people get in. I've got a lot of people getting in touch, okay, and they say, "Oh, can you just draw this up for me?" <laughs> and I always feel that they think it's going to be very quick. Hmm. Yeah. So they think you can why. do it. They think you could just uh, take a Saturday afternoon and have something done. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that's, that's not it. how yeah. it works. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, so if people want to find you, they obviously can find 
all the wallpaper on MiltonandKing.com. Mm -hmm. um, but what about if they want to um, just buy a piece of art to frame or anything like that? Where should they go? So if they have Instagram, they can follow me at Catherine Marion Art. Um, and then there'll be a link in my bio with all the different uh, things I do. So prints, I have got phone cases as well. Um, and I've got wallpapers with you guys. Um, otherwise, they can go straight to my website, which is um, katrinmarionart.com. How cool would it be to uh, have your phone case match your wall? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very Definitely. cool. Well, I know you are, did you say you're in a parking lot or on the side of the road or? Yeah, <laughs> in a parking lot next to the cemetery. <laughs> oh, how inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I appreciate you uh, going and searching for a spot with a good internet connection so that we could have this chat. Um, thank you so much for joining me here. And um, I look forward to all the new designs you're going to be coming out with. Oh, that's great. It was very fun. It was nice speaking to you. All right. You have a good one. Thanks, Catherine. Okay. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.